this. We're going to bring in David Bossy. He's the former deputy campaign manager for Donald Trump. He's also a Fox News contributor and the co-author of Let Trump Be Trump. It's doing great. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me this morning. Excellent. David, so talk to us. The continued litigation of the fake news media and its utility. Look, you guys were just laying it out perfectly. This president is engaged and talking directly to the American people because of the fake news divisions that we just, look, This just this week we've seen four now with the Dave Weigel photograph, four major incidents by ABC News, uh, by CNN, by most of the wire networks, and then now the Washington Post, delivering fake news, lies about this president, whether it's ABC and lying about uh, about the president, whether it's CNN lying about uh, Don Trump Jr. Uh, it is it is outrageous. And the president uses his bully pulpit to make sure that the support his supporters that and that all Americans understand they're not being honest. They're not being. They're not trustworthy. And and so I look. I want the media to do a good job. If and so does the president. If they did a good job, he wouldn't be engaged with them. So, so David, does this pretty much stick the fork in the Russian conclusion? Uh, Russia collusion story. I mean, is this is this finally say? You know what? It's over. Well, I certainly hope so. Look, this investigation, Griffin, has been going on for 18 months. 18 months and not one scintilla of evidence of Russian collusion or cooperation with our campaign. And, and, and I was there. I never saw it. I never heard about it. There's just no evidence. And if there was, we know that the left within the Mueller probe. We know the left within the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate who are just filled with leaks would mm -hmm. have put it out there. There's just no question if there was evidence. And so I hope this finally puts this to bed. David, when I opened up my New York Times comma failing, I saw a, <laughs> uh, a photo here. It would otherwise be known as a bad photo because you can't see his face, but it's a shadowy photo of the president calling the president versus the presidency. It's not just the facts that are reported. It's the emphasis of the reporting and the narrative that they try to drive, that this is a guy just watching TV, eating random food, tweeting, talking, he's out of control. This is what the New York Times said about Nancy from Nancy Pelosi in that article it said at first there was a threat of being an imposter that may have been in his mind the bigger problem the thing people need to understand is that he was utterly unprepared for this it would be like if you or me going into a room and being asked to perform brain surgery when you have a lack of knowledge as great as his it can be bewildering the assumption there is would they have written an article like that about a community <laughs> organizer or a lawyer a state senator who became president that's shameful. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is a stooge. And when you say something like that, just, just that is so uh, beneath the office that she holds, uh, f for sheer political purposes, to try and pile on the narrative of the fake news divisions of the New York Times and others, it is, it's just preposterous. And it's one of the reasons why Donald Trump got elected in the first place. He is not a career politician. He is a change agent that came to Washington to fix Nancy Pelosi's broken status quo, if you will. And so Nancy, under Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama, the stagnant economy, 1.2, 1.4% growth. And under under President Trump, you have 3.3, over 3% for the last two quarters. You have an economy that is expanding in droves, jobs numbers like we've never seen, 2.2 million new jobs just in the last year alone. And the vibrant economy through the, his sheer force of his will on one hand and, the, and his deregulatory pen in the other. And now we have tax reform that is very close, getting to the president's desk, hopefully within days, if not a week or so. And then we're going to have that boost to our economy that we need. That's what this president's about. He doesn't care uh, what Nancy Pelosi thinks. Okay, let me ask you this, though. Yeah. Um, so when you're talking about the economy, certainly everybody is thrilled that uh, American economy is doing so well. It's certainly thriving. Most everybody can see that with their investments, their portfolios, their 401 case, uh, I would submit that President Barack Obama did stabilize uh, a very uh, unfortunate and scary economic picture back in 2008. But either way, what we know is things look <laughs> well, good. But things look good right now, right, Dave? But here's my question. Nancy Pelosi, what Pete read there, we expect that of Nancy Pelosi. That's who we know her to be. Sure. But when it comes to the New York Times, and when it comes to these institutions that many Americans still look towards uh, to give them some type of balance, some type of fuller sure. picture, what the is your statement then, Dave, to the New York Times and these other public 
publications that, in my view, are sacrificing their very credibility just to go after this president. Whether right or wrong, actually, on the merits. I'm actually not even going to litigate that. I'm just speaking to the credibility. All the fake news that's fit to print. That, that's, that's, that is exactly what the New York Times has become. That's now what the Washington Post did uh, with that photograph. Th this is just a continuation of this problem. And let me just say one thing about back to Barack Obama. He more than doubled our national debt. He, he went from $10 trillion to $20 trillion in eight years. It took over 220 years to get to $10 trillion. And I would submit that George Bush didn't help us at all with, with the bailout at the end there, but exactly. with a trillion dollars at the end. But that is a, 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 such a disaster for our economy. It's weighing on us. The only way out of this is Donald Trump's growth, hope, growth, and opportunity theory, oh, uh, which is really that, Dave, I'm not going to debate the, the, the yeah. certain uh, lessening of these regulations having a tremendous impact, a positive impact, simply saying I think that certainly he was positioned to come in and, and make those types of David, changes. you talked about the economy. You did too as well, Ebony, yep. that, uh, and the the president is up tweeting early this morning about the economy and tax reform. He said, uh, getting closer and closer to the tax cut bill, shaping up even better than projected. House and Senate working very hard and smart. End result will, will not only be important, but special. He also talked about the record high in the market. Unemployment now at 17-year low. Companies are coming back into the USA. Really good news. Much more to come. president also recording, we're hearing this morning, robocalls for Roy Moore. How much of that special election is about making sure you have the votes you need to pass tax reform? Well, I think it's 100 uh, percent about what is going to happen on Tuesday. And I think the people of Alabama and no one else uh, is going to make the decision as to who represents them. But I and then, you know what, if the Senate wants to take up, uh, you know, an issue with Roy Moore if he wins and when he because when he they, wins. They, they did say, David, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he will absolutely go before an ethics investigation upon election if he wins. Yeah, and I think that look, that's their that's their right as the Senate body. They can do whatever they want when he gets here, but they have to let the people of Alabama speak. And I think sure. that the folks in Alabama want somebody to go to Washington to help this president get his agenda through. That's really what this election is about. It's about a, a leftist who is, uh, you know, on on the Democrat side, who is going to come here and obstruct everything that this president wants, versus quite simply somebody who is going to agree with the president's agenda, a pro-growth, pro-national security, peace-through-strength agenda that this president has. And I think that we're going to see a result for Roy Moore on Tuesday. David, let me quickly ask you a question in that, going back to the New York Times article, now, assuming the president gets tax reform done and he signs it, I think it's going to be on Christmas Eve if they get it. How much do these New York Times articles where he's getting painted as Chancey the Gardener, I said, matter? <laughs> Does the president care? Does it matter? Or is he just ignoring it at this point? No, no, no. He doesn't care what the media says. He continues to do his job for all Americans, for the American people every day, getting this economy back on track. That's his number one issue. And that's what he campaigned on. And that's what we talk mm -hmm. about in our book, Let Trump Be Trump. Let Trump be Trump. Let David Bossy, thanks a lot for joining us this morning.